Well, we're so happy to have with us uh, former Bay Sox manager Brad Commons as uh, we are here with a double A show, our quarantine show, and uh, having some fun here on Zoom today. And so great to see one of the great old friends of the uh, of the Bay Sox team here today. Brad, thank you so much for being with us. And I, I know we're catching you at work. How, how are you doing here in this in this unusual time? I'm doing great. Yeah, it's uh, I'm over in Ohio, so it. They they uh, took some steps early to uh, hopefully slow down the pandemic. Uh, <laughs> things have been going good. Good. Play, was... Playing a little golf and just uh, taking it easy. Fantastic. Brad, of course, was the manager of the Bay Sox from 2008 to 2010. And in 2008, uh, you know, it was not a championship season, but it might have been the best team in Bay Sox history. Uh, you know, you had some veterans on that team like Lou Montanez, uh, who was outstanding and actually played in the big leagues for the Orioles that year. But guys like Matt Weeders, Chris Tillman, uh, it, it was an incredible season. And uh, can you share with us some memories from from that outstanding campaign? I mean, it was a great year, obviously. Uh, we had a lot of talent. Our pitching staff was second to none. Um, and then the guys came to play every day. So it was, it was definitely a lot of fun. Um, unfortunately, we got beaten in the playoffs by uh, Travis Hafner. But... <laughs> Other than that, it was, it was still a great year. It was, it was a great year. Too bad it didn't go a little bit further, but uh, we did have a lot of fun there in, uh, in Bowie. Actually, I did every, every year I was there. I love Bowie, and uh, everybody treated me great. So what a great spot. The Nolan Reimold had that game uh, in the playoffs as well, didn't he? I think that's still a Bay Sox record as far as RBIs in, in which he, he, he hit multiple home runs. He did. I mean, he, he was a great talent, too, and obviously had a nice big league career. Uh, when you mix him with Montanez with the Triple Crown and, you know, Bergerson and Birkin and all mm -hmm. those guys pitching, Hernandez, and um, it, was, it, was, it was a special team. I would have to say it would rank as, you know, maybe if, if not the best, it has to be, you know, it's two or three uh, uh, all time in Bowie. I mean, it was pretty, it came to, to the ballpark, had a lot of fun and knew we could win at any time. So it, it, was, it was fun. Now, I know it wasn't a free effort to you, and I know you didn't enjoy it as much as our press box did, but <laughs> you were known for your ejections. And I remember a very classic one where someone took off their shoes, so I was hoping you could relive that story for us. Who would do such a thing? Who would, who would do allegedly, such a thing as me? Allegedly. Oh, uh, it's alleged. Yeah, it must be somebody else's story, but as the story goes, I guess. Um, a certain manager didn't like some of the calls the umpires were making, so <laughs> it was time to go. I think there was a good, uh, good episode of, of uh, uh, some good TV show on, and I had to get in and check it out. Maybe uh, who knows what it was, but uh, um, I politely didn't yell, didn't do anything. I can't believe he ejected me, but um, I put my shoes right in the umpires, you know, where the umpire stands, and put my hat on top. And I told him to let this guy call the game because he would do a, do a better job of it. You know, and since it was obviously run out of there and to uh, many boos, but uh, it was so fun. And I guess it's remember whoever did it did a good job. Yeah. If it's still living, uh, if it's still in the history books. Yeah, I forget which manager it was, but it, it was a very entertaining day. <laughs> yes. Thank you. You got to make them entertaining. If you're going to get thrown out, you got to get your money's worth, Adrian. You know that. You know that. <laughs> When Lester little... getting out to golf, we just opened up our courses on Thursday. That's right. And that was a contention here because Virginia, Delaware, uh, Jersey had opened back up. York was actually open almost the entire time. They stopped for a little bit in too, Maryland. Yeah. Oh, you did that as well? We've been open since, I mean, it's pretty cold in March, obviously, like Bowie. But we were, I played early April. and It was actually nicer then than it is now. Although today's a beautiful day. Yesterday it was about 40 degrees here. So it was definitely not golfing weather. Maybe maybe uh, skiing or something, but um, yeah, we've been playing. Yeah, it's been nice here. Are both your kids still in school or is your son playing or? Um, I got three in school. Actually, my oldest is actually, she's getting her master's. So nice. she's almost done. My son's getting his master's. He's almost done. Then my youngest is going to be a senior at UMass Boston. So um, I got actually three in school at, at the same time. So it's a, it's That's kind of hurts the rich. finances a little bit, but they're doing they're doing great. And uh, my son plays baseball at Ohio Dominican, which is a D two mm -hmm. D two school here in town. And he's actually like a he's probably like the most tenured uh, athlete in the country. He's like on his sixth year of playing. He uh, played his first three years, got hurt his senior year, so got red shirted, knowing he was going to come back and get his master's. So he played, and this year was his you know fifth year. 
right. and then 19 hit and they cancel their season. So all those guys got to play again. And he has, I think he has two or three classes to take to, to finish up his master's. So the coaches said, Hey, if you want to come back, uh, we'll pay for it. And, uh, he's planning on doing it right now. So. Wow. That's great. That's he's, working, he's working on his sixth year. Yeah. <laughs> Probably at first. Yeah. It sounds like me. Back yeah, in the graduate days. <laughs> but, but we're here with Brad Commons. It's so great to have you with us. Tell us what you were, uh, had a long major league baseball career as well. And then you transitioned into uh, being a, a coach. How did that go down? What, when did you make that decision, and, and what was your opportunity to make that move? Well, I, you know, I played the major leagues over 10 years, but only really – I got about four years in the major leagues, but over 10. So when I was done, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't know what I really wanted to do and had a right. chance to go to Italy, played a couple years in Italy my last couple years, kind of like awesome. – a paid vacation to Italy, which and the guys were great. I still keep in contact with some of them. Had a great time there, and then um, I came back and decided I wanted to try to get into coaching. Went up to the Northern League as a player coach just to get a little, a little bit of experience or something to throw on the resume. Anyway, I didn't really do much coaching, but I did get to play <laughs> it on my resume. And then um, got hired by Detroit. You know, it's it actually right before spring training. Uh, one of their hitting coaches in Triple A, Gary Green, I think he had a death in the family and had to had to take care of, um, you know, the estate and stuff of maybe his father. Um, so I had a buddy that was an assistant to the GM. He called said, hey, do you want to coach? I'm like, yeah, sure. Um, so uh, that's how I really got into it, you know, been, and coached for, what, 17 years. Uh, now, speaking of resumes, I do have <laughs> a little quick something I want to show. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it hopefully won't be too bad. <laughs> And here we go. Oh, that's, yeah. a good, that's, a good one that's my best resume piece, probably. <laughs> Unbelievable. And that is just incredible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. At that's Old Memorial that Stadium, I'm, Brad. I, it, it gets posted on Facebook every now and then, so I got to check it every now and then, you know. So it's pretty <laughs> cool. Yeah, the so, Old Memorial Stadium, yeah, definitely. That was a. Uh, yeah. Now, from a coaching perspective, there's a lot of kids out there in college right now, in high school. They're all kind of wondering what's going on, when they're going to get the opportunity to play. What can you tell them about staying optimistic and what kind of things should they be doing as an athlete to stay prepared for when the seasons do begin again? I mean, I think most, most athletes are still probably doing something, maybe albeit by themselves. You know, hitters might be hitting off the tee or – throwing in a net or just doing anything to stay active and keep your mind focused a little bit. Um, but there's definitely, I mean, it's like when we're all kids growing up, you know, you could always find a game or find something to do, you know, throw a ball against the wall or, or do whatever. There's always, there's always something to do. So, you know, athletes, they should still be left in, you know, or doing whatever they can, you know, with, within their certain situation, whether it just be working out at home or, you know, obviously none of the gyms are open, but there's, there's definitely things to do. And, and uh, stay active and keep, keep focused and uh, keep, keep the hope up that they're going to get a player sometime soon. Now we've been doing uh, a quick segment and this is going to be a rapid fire with Brad. So we're going to put him on the spot and give him some quick questions to ask. They're going to be easy. I promise it won't hurt too bad. <laughs> Are you ready Adam, for a timer? All ready. I'm, we're ready. On your mark, get set, go. Did you play an instrument? Did I do what? Play an instrument? I did not. Okay, what is your favorite class that you took in school? Um, oh, that's good. That's, I might blow the thing. Probably gym. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. That's a, my that's favorite a real teacher? answer. Uh, your favorite movie? Uh, maybe The Green Mile. Favorite color? Blue. Your favorite car? Uh, my, first, my first, the Trans Am, uh, 79 Trans Am. Your favorite all-time player, not coaching, just all-time player ever? Uh, Johnny Bench. Your toothpaste, what type do you use? Um, usually Colgate, but I don't mind Crest either. And Pep's not for a little flavor every now and then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and your favorite candy? Favorite candy? Oh, God, I love every candy. I'm like, you know I got a sweet tooth. Come on, Adrian, you know that. <laughs> so, um, oh, God, that's, that's a tough one. I really, I, I could put about 30 of them in a, in a box, you know, you name it, I can, I can do it. Candy, I love candy. We'll put that category in all the above. I'm going to turn yeah, this put back. All, all of the above Adam. is good, yes. 
<laughs> Adam, uh, what's your uh, next toss up? Oh, my, you, you mean my next uh, next question for Brad? I, I want to hear a little bit about the being an Oriole, because you did, did play for the Orioles in 1990, and that was the end of the Memorial Stadium era, but it was after one of my favorite seasons as a fan, the 1989 Why Not Orioles, and uh, kind of that no-name team that, that was so outstanding. In 1990, you guys also had a, a no-hitter thrown in Oakland that year, but, uh, uh, but tell us a, a little bit about being a part of that team. I mean, uh, Orioles obviously a story tradition. One of one of the great franchises in in baseball, and um, you know Frank was the manager. I mean, you got right. uh, I was lucky to be able to play for Frank, and you know Rip was there, and um, just a great. I mean, Bal obviously Baltimore's a great baseball town, great sports town. So um, it was just very fitting. I love I love my time in Baltimore. Loved it there. Um, so uh, you know, I was just I was proud and, and lucky to be a, a member of the organization. Definitely. You know, great people throughout the whole the whole organization. Well, I just want to thank you so much for joining us, Brad, being part of the Double A Show. I've really missed being around you. It was a great time when you were coaching with the Bay Sox. We really had some great times going out and just the way you coached the kids and brought them up and brought the team, the cohesiveness those years. I just, again, it's an honor to have you on our show and thank you for joining us today. And this has been Adam, Brad, and myself. Thanks, Adrian and Adam. I, I enjoyed it, and thanks for having me. And uh, always, always a base sock. Base sock for life. Thank you.